Hey everyone, this is Samir again with another tutorial for FX 2.6 and today I take a short but closer look at the pop converter node which is quite a node actually helping out in a lot of situations very useful so let's take a look at it and I have just the preset scene here that is emitting particles so let's create a pop converter node like this just go back put it in here and the usual behavior that we used the converter for is well converting particles like this we have liquid particles so this will be source and it would be instantly uh, converted to vorticity particles like this but you know, we know this stuff already what I would like to show you is that you can also use the converter as a particle killer so instead of choosing a target particle subgroup we simply choose nirvana which is just a death place like this and you can see that the particles are killed well but of course we don't want them to kill it right away so what are we doing yes exactly we're using constraints so you can exactly uh, tell the node where the particles should be converted or killed in this case for example we could use well a volume constraint like this and well we don't choose our volume our emission volume but for example I could simply copy it like this and uh, put it down here so in the end particles would only be killed if they would enter this volume which is a sphere let's go back into our converter to our volume constraint which is just here and now we choose the second volume like this and it's set up so you can see they're not killed only if they enter uh, this exact volume so that way you can control killing of particles anywhere in space and also based on any kind of constraint that we have here in our constraints list you know, a lot of stuff if possible with uh, combined constraints, never underestimate it. All right, so that would be cool for killing particles as well. Uh, but there are other things you can do with uh, the converter. So let's get rid of the constraint again. In this case, we uh, also turn off our emitter because I want to show you that you can create emitters from other particles just as quickly for example let's create an x particle emitter like this put it down here here we go swoop <clears throat> we play this you can see that x particles are generated and actually we can also convert from x particles like this which is liquid uh, for our particle group here which is already set as before but otherwise you would just choose it here or drop it here and uh, well now we have an X particles emitter that is creating liquid particles so they're instantly converted so you can use any X particles emitter also as a emitter for uh, liquid particles and of course also here we can choose a volume constraint for example uh, let's just do this by going into the volume that we would have to be constrained and uh, click on CS volume like this and we just do all the linking put it down here and uh, well assign it so also here the particles would only be converted once they reach this volume like so like this well, not really hitting at all as you can see so let's do this again Shoop. there you go so it's pretty easy pretty pretty cool to combine uh, different particle systems even third-party plugins and of course the same works for thinking particles uh, I guess you get the point I don't have to create another emitter here it just works the same but there are also other stuff that you can actually add. For example, it can also convert uh, a sphere 
So the points would be then uh, kind of emitting uh, all the stuff. And as you can see, nothing happens yet. And there's a reason for that, of course, because we're still using the CS volume. So I could remove this constraint. And then you can see that each point of the mesh will actually create a simple particle. I create a, <laughs> a liquid particle here. Also, if we turn off the only at particle location, which would just generate one particle at each point. Uh, well, we have the same as before. We can, for example, create a settings particle and then choose an emission value here for each point that would be now 1000 liquid particles generated per second. If I wanted it per frame, as we have seen in previous tutorials, just create the shot one. Well, so that's also pretty neat. And uh, well, at the same time, you could also use a spline like this and instead choose the spline instead of a sphere. So you can see that each vertex of uh, that spline also now particles are generated. So spline emitters pretty quickly done also with this one. Well, there you go. Of course, you can also do the same with just the usual SIMA 4D particle system. But there's one more I would like to show you, TP binding in 2.60.60. Get rid of this one. Turn on our usual emitter again. Turn off contribute adapted bounds that we had turned on before. Now let's choose our particle group again. Keep it out here as a target group and now go into simulate into the thinking particle settings now i can drop a thinking particles group here as a target group and as you can see we have a new option here as well which is called fill and uh, i choose this one and also this one ah, i should of course turn on this one as well Well, as you can see, the particles are converted and then always killed again. So I turn off kill original because I don't want the original particles to be killed. I just want to bind the positions and all the other uh, properties of these particle groups uh, to thinking particles. Like this, turn off kill original. Now you can see that for each liquid particle, there will be a thinking particle, actually. And I can now, uh, well, render this, these particles, with any uh, module or plugin that supports thinking particles. For example, uh, the hair module or the new C4D to Arnold connection, so the Arnold renderer, or any other well, plugin or whatever that can use thinking particles. One thing we notice is that the particles are kind of flickering here. And the reason for that is that the thinking particles will get an H of one. So one frame once they're converted, so they kind of instantly dying off. So what we need to do is we need to add an H property to our liquid particles that will be converted like this. Choose PPH, set it. Well, you could set it very high number. And now when the liquid particles are converted to thinking particles, the thinking particles will get this uh, according H as well. So they're not dying off and they can take uh, all the other positions subsequently. And now it's as we wanted it to be. So I hope this was helpful and you have seen that the pop converter is much more than just a conversion thing. You can kill particles, you can work with external particles, you can you know, bind thinking particles and X particles as well, just as we did, uh, just for your information, even if I didn't show it yet. We can create uh, spline emitters, we can create um, mesh emitters. Of course, we also have a mesh emitter, particle emitter as well, uh, natively, which is emitter particle on mesh. But, uh, well, I just wanted to show that it works, right? So have fun with this one, explore it, and hope this was helpful. See you at the next tutorial for Facts 2.6.